World Population Day seeks to draw attention to issues related to a growing global population. According to the United States Census Bureau, the world's population as of June 2019 is over 7.5 billion people. This year, the theme of the World Population Day 2020 is to raise awareness about safeguarding sexual and reproductive health needs and vulnerabilities of women and girls during the COVID-19 pandemic. Joining us now is Ula Elizabeth Mueller, the resident representative, United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, Nigeria. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good afternoon. In April, uh, some published findings revealed that prolonged lockdown due to the pandemic portend negative trends for women and girls when it comes to violence and protection of their sexual and reproductive rights. It has been referred to as a shadow pandemic. How is the UNFPA proceeding to mitigate this aspect of the working and working with care authorities to respond to these crises? Well, the UN as a whole, as a, as a, as a united uh, country team, the first, the first thing we did was to um, convene a meeting with the government uh, and with the presidential task force in order to ensure we had a coherent and, and uniform approach that was supportive to the government's response. A very important part of that was to ensure that uh, the protection of women and prevention and response, gender-based violence was fully recognized in the national response to COVID-19. Um, we also look inwards towards our programs at UNFPA in order to reprogram our activities so that we could include COVID-19 awareness and prevention in our work with our implementing partners. We've also uh, converted a lot of our work into virtual work using digital solutions to ensure counseling and, and access to safe houses and um, and protection of women and girls exposed to gender-based violence. All right. Oh, we, we, we spoke with you earlier and uh, we talked a little about uh, census and the need for it, but we're trying to focus this time on the women issues and that's the, the theme for this year. Now, would domestication of the VAP Act and the Child Rights Act and other legislation minimize such occurrences of violence, especially as many states are yet to domesticate uh, the VAP Act uh, law? It's a really good question, and there's no clear answer. It's both a yes and a no. <laughs> yes, so okay. domestication <laughs> of these very important tools is only the first step. There also need to be implementation and enforcement of any legal frameworks. If the laws are not effective, if we do not follow up both with the working with the judiciary and the executive arms. And this is why in our advocacy work and the work we do with the government through the Ministry of Women Affairs is that we call for laws to be fully implemented and enforced. That's the only way that we can improve the situation on gender-based violence. There has to be uh, access to justice for women exposed to gender-based violence and perpetrators need to be persecuted under the current legislation. Okay. Uh, humanitarian settings come with uh, their own uh, unique challenges. There is a decade-long conflict, socioeconomic inequalities, and now we have COVID-19. For UNFPA, when it comes to advocating for sexual and reproductive rights, or even conducting a head count, all these are reliant on data. Just how does the humanitarian work continue amid these mountain risks? Oh. So, <laughs> it is, I mean, the humanitarian situation, I think we have to also be aware of in Nigeria, is, is, is not, it's a double jeopardy, I think that's the way to say it. We have a protracted crisis in the Northeast. We have COVID-19. And we do have what we also call the uh, 
uh, shadow pandemic of gender-based violence. And, and with, an, with that increase we are seeing, it, we actually commissioned a study to look at the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. And what we know is that in humanitarian work, gender-based violence has to be fully integrated as a life-saving service and recognized as such, which is a big part of what we do with the USDA in collaboration with the Nigerian government and with our management partners in the humanitarian settings. All right. Um, I think we're having a bit of an issue with the audio. Can you hear me? I don't hear you very well, and I have a lot of echo. Um, okay, I apologize for that. Um, just to wrap up quickly, what are your thoughts um, on this world's uh, commemoration um, of World uh, Population Day? What one, one message you would want to give as a take home to everyone watching? It is always women and girls who pays the highest price in crisis. And that has become painfully visible during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, where we do see an increase in gender-based violence. This can only be stopped if everyone, family members, community members, religious leaders, pledge to set actions to the words walk the talk and stop gender-based violence now and recognize women's and girls' equal rights. All right. Thank you very much, Ula Elizabeth Mueller, for your thoughts on the issue. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care now.